we're going to go through a titration curve. This is a weak acid, strong base titration curve. So what I want to do in this is I don't want to go through the, lo the logistics of the mathematics behind finding the pH. Rather, I want to go through at various points along this curve what chemical reactions are occurring and what chemical species are present to try and clarify that for when you do try and go through and calculate the pH. If you'd like to see the pH of one of these worked out, uh, there's a link in the description to some of the problems where you can find a problem, attempt it, see a solution, see another one, do the same thing, or repeat. So at the beginning of our titration curve, what essentially what we're doing is we're starting with the weak acids, so we're going to call that HA, uh, I believe it's ethanoic acid or acetic acid. We're starting with the weak acid present at the beginning in water, and we are progressively adding more and more NaOH. And kind of the basic premise overlying this feature is that as the NaOH is added, it's going to react with the HA in a stoichiometric fashion. So it's going to neutralize it completely. This is going to be removed through that reaction. The weak acid is going to be partially removed until we get to the equivalence point, and it's going to produce the conjugate base. So what I want to do is kind of outline that at each of these points. Uh, so we're going to start over here at point A. So at point A, what I have going on is I have my weak acid. And that's it, I haven't added any any NaOH yet, so any hydroxide. But the other thing I have going on there is I have water, which is important because in, in all of this, we have the water molecules reacting with themselves and with these weak acids and conjugate bases and strong bases to form hydroxide and H3O plus ions. And so at the beginning here, I just have the weak acid and the water present. That's going to be an equilibrium reaction where the HA is going to react with the water to form its conjugate base and H3O plus. And that reaction is responsible for the pH being below 7 because we're producing more H3O pluses. Those H3O pluses then affect the water equilibrium, the KW expression, and that affects your hydroxide. Uh, and then, of course, we end up with this pH. Now, as we move beyond point A, so just beyond point A, we enter into kind of this buffer region, which lasts all the way up until this point here. It starts just after this, and it's not inclusive of this point. After that point, what's going to happen is the HA is going to initially react with the NaOH. That's going to be complete, not an equilibrium reaction. What's going to happen there is I'm going to make A minus and I'm going to make uh, water. Okay, and of course I'll have my Na plus there as well, spectator ion. So this is going to go to completion. But what's happening is I'm adding a little bit of this to a lot of that. At this point, I've added very little NaOH compared to how much HA I have. So when this reaction goes to completion, this is going to be an excess. This is going to be your limiting reagent. And then this is going to be produced. So when I'm done, I'm going to have three things present. I'm going to have HA, I'm going to have water, and I'm going to have a common ion, I'm going to have a conjugate base, Minus. Those three things are going to establish an equilibrium that allows me to figure out what my H3O plus concentration is by given the starting amounts of this and this. There are two ways to calculate that. You can do a simple ice chart, you plug in the starting concentrations, or you can do a Henderson Hasselbeck equation as well. But what I want to stress to you is this. So we start with this, it turns into those three chemicals present four chemicals, we want to put the H2O plus five, we want to put the hydroxide. But as I'm moving from this point along this curve, here's what you're going to see happen. At this point, for your HA and your A minus, at the beginning here, you're starting with a lot of HA and very little A minus. When you get to this point, halfway to the equivalence point, the half equivalence point, then, as a result of this neutralization reaction, you're actually going to end up with even amounts of both HA and A minus. Now that is a special point, a half equivalence point, because when these two things are equal, you can see the result of your ice chart is, is that the concentration, or the moles of this, concentration of that, sorry, is going to be equal to your equilibrium constant, Ka. Uh, and the negative log of this, the pH, will be equal to your pK. So you can actually trace this point back along to here and use that to figure out what your pK will be. Okay. 
as I continue along and get to here, now all of a sudden I'm looking at a case where nearly all of my HA has been neutralized and I'm ending up with a large amount of E minus and very little of this in excess. So we're kind of role reversing here. And that's why we end up with, as we're doing this, we're kind of shifting from the weak acid to its conjugate base. And so as we're doing that, we're seeing that the pH is slightly increasing as we move all the way across this. So as we move throughout this buffering region, that's what's happening. Now, the buffering region often will get a question that says, where do you want your buffer to be, so to speak? Uh, what is the buffer uh, as it's losing its capacity? So as we're getting to this point, what we're seeing happen is, if I continue to add NaOH, I'm drastically changing the ratio of these. And that's going to cause the pH to start to change by more. And you can see that kind of on the upswing here, where pretty soon that pH is going to start to rise really rapidly. Over here, same kind of thing. Here, I really don't have the capacity to absorb a lot of HCl. So if I added a bunch of strong acid at this point, I'm going to exceed my buffer capacity. And I'm going to end up just producing H+. Plus, and at that point, point, my pH is going to drop rapidly. Um, so when you're at this near half equivalence point, that's when your buffering region is kind of the most stable, and you'll find that the slope of this line is the smallest at that particular point. Okay. So as I'm moving from here to here, I'm in my buffering region. I basically have HA, A minus, and water present, and then those establish an equilibrium that affects my H3O plus, which of course impacts my OH minus. And as I'm moving from here to here, what I'm doing is I'm doing a stoichiometry calculation to figure out how much of each of those things that I have. At first, I have a lot of this in excess. Near the end, I have a lot of this product with very little excess for me. Okay. When I get to this point, however, let's switch color. When I get to this point, that's when, according to this, this is no longer in excess. I've had exactly equivalent amounts of these added. So this is neutralized, this is neutralized, and all I have is A minus and 1. So I have my conjugate base and water at that point. You can think of it as kind of a salt solution. In this case, I'd have sodium acetate. Okay? And that is going to react in an equilibrium fashion. And I'm going to end up with some weak acid and hydroxide. A few things about that. Whatever tools you're using to calculate pH, keep in mind that now you're not producing H3O plus, you're now producing the opposite. You're now producing OH minus. So if you solve for an X and take the negative log of that, that's no longer giving you pH, that's giving you pH. You're going to have to adjust for it. Okay? The other thing to keep in mind, it's really important at this point, a lot of people will assume the concentration of weak acid is, is equal to the concentration of the weak base present here. And that's wrong because this entire time you've been adding solution blocks. So now you've added a whole bunch of water, and that's going to affect that concentration. If the concentration of weak acid and strong base are equal, this will actually end up being half of what this concentration was at the beginning. Okay. This can be done as a simple KB equilibrium analysis. We can find our pH from there. After that point, let's even go a little further and let's switch colors again. After that point, now I have hydroxide in excess. So I still have all of my A minus that I had before and my water. But that hydroxide in excess basically sets up, that's the end of your calculation. This is going to cause such a small change in hydroxide concentration for the equilibrium because KB is going to be very small for this. This is a weak acid, weak base combo. Uh, this is going to dominate my calculation, and I can essentially ignore the A minus at that point. That's one of those plus X where you can just ignore the X. Uh, and so at this point, we would just do hydroxide present with water. Uh, we would ignore everything else. We'd just figure out the concentration of hydroxide. To do that, you would have to find the moles of excess using stoichiometry, and then divide by your total solution volume to do. Okay, so we kind of have a whole bunch of points here. Let's start to label this. So let's say this is point E somewhere after that. Let's call this point D. Let's call this point C. And then we'll have like a region B. So the region B will extend kind of from here all the way over up to right before D. All right, so region A, we have weak acid and water, and that's it. That's going to be an equilibrium analysis. We're going to produce H3O plus. 
for our calculation, really simple, we can just do Ka is equal to x squared over that initial concentration if we can ignore minus x from our ice term. Okay, so we can do that, we can solve for x and the negative log of x be the negative log of our h plus concentration, that'll be our pH. Okay. Let's jump over to part C. No, let's not. Let's go to region B. In region B, we have two reactions going. We have an NaOH plus an HA. Okay, that is not going to be a stoichiometry. Just kidding. That's going to be a complete reaction. Sorry, I keep including that sodium ion in there. Hopefully that's not confusing. This is going to be a stoichiometry calculation. This is a neutralization. You have something really good at pulling on an H plus away from things. It's going to take every H plus away from one of those that it can. When it does that, though, you're left with the conjugate base in one. So now what we have happening is the HA is in excess. This is your limiting reagent. This reacts completely. Some of this is left over. Some of this is produced. Those two things react with water to set up our equilibrium calculation. The difference between this and this, though, is that now I have an initial amount of this. So I can't just plug in x for the final amount of this. It's going to be my initial amount plus x, or I'm going to ignore that plus x. Okay. So now I'm looking at more Ka is equal to x times that concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of HA. And these are going to shift. The more of this that I add, I'm going to end up increasing this amount and decreasing that amount. Okay. And so that's going to then affect my x value, and that's going to then, I can negative log that x and find pH. At point C was when H, A, and A minus are equal to each other. Your half equivalence point. What we've done at that point is you've essentially neutralized half of this to produce that same amount of moles of that. And so when those two are equal, your pH is equal to your pK. Or the other way of saying that would be that your H plus is equal to your Ka. Because at that point, these are equal. X is equal to Ka. That's your H plus concentration. If I negative logarithm that, I get my pH. Okay. Then point D is at your equivalence point. So at that point now, all of this is reacted. All of this is reacted. It's all turned into this. However many moles of these I had, that's how many moles of A minus I have. Divide that by my volume, and now I have my concentration of A minus. That's going to then react with water. But now we're doing an, a basic reaction with water. So we're going to produce the conjugate acid and hydroxide. So there we can set up the Kb, which we can find from Ka and then negative 14 over Ka. That's going to equal x squared over this A minus concentration. Solve for x, negative log of x. That's your hydroxide concentration. Now that's your pOH. Find the pH, we would subtract from 14. Those are, that's what chemicals are present and kind of the equations you would use to set up with those for that titration. After that, you get into excess hydroxide. That really simplifies things down as long as you've been following along with how to do the neutralization. You would just find your excess of this, divide by the total volume, negative log of that would be your pOH, subtract from 14 and you have your pH. So those are what chemicals are present and kind of how to analyze this curve. Now what you can do with this, it's really nice, is then any pH problem can essentially be boiled down into one of these five things. Either you're looking at just a strong acid or strong base, just a weak acid or weak base, you're looking at a conjugate acid or base, or you're looking at a buffer. So if I give you a problem and say, oh, I'm mixing some of this with some of this, you can then say, okay, well, that's like region B of this curve. I'm mixing equal amounts of these. Okay, well, that's like part C. I have just some HA. That's like part, excuse me, part A. Uh, I just have HCl in a beaker. Okay, that's like part E, except for the opposing titration. So this is a great organizational tool to be able to do any acid-base pH calculation.